This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to talk about negative angle identities. So what you can expect to see in this video is that we will talk about those uh, negative angles and we'll come to some understanding as to why it is they are the way they are. All right, let's get started. So let's understand these negative angle identities that I have posted here. And uh, the best way to do that is to look at a few examples. Like, for instance, let's say you wanted to find the sine of negative 30 degrees. Well, if you wanted to find the sine of 30 degrees, according to this, uh, I guess these formulas that you see here, which I guess the better name for them would be identities, is that you would find the sine of 30 degrees and then just take the opposite of that value. So when I do these problems, uh, I imagine a 30 degree angle. So here's 30 degrees, bad picture. But uh, so if I have a 30 degree angle, I know the opposite is one. I know the hypotenuse is two. And I know the adjacent side is square root of three. And what's the definition of sine? Well, the definition of sine is opposite, which would be one over the hypotenuse is two. And of course, I have to take the opposite of that. All right, let's take a look at a, another. Okay, so let's say we had, I don't know, how about the cosine of 150 degrees? Except I'm gonna make it negative. Okay, so if I wanted to figure out what this is, well, according to this, it's just equal to the cosine of 150 degrees. So what does the cosine of 150 degrees look like? Well, again, if you draw this, 150 degrees is over here in this quadrant. And if you draw that 150 degree angle, you can see that you have, again, a 30 degree reference angle. So I drop this and I say, hmm, 30 degrees. Well, I know opposite is one, adjacent square root of three, hypotenuse is two. Because I'm in the second quadrant, the x value has to be negative. I'm going left, left and up, so that'd be negative x value, positive y value. So how do you figure out the cosine? Well, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. <clears throat> and there you have it. Okay, so you can see that these are fairly easy to do. Uh, I'm gonna skip tangent, works pretty much like the way sine works. Now, let's come to under some uh, understanding as to why these formulas, I keep saying for why these identities work the way they do. Okay, let's go to the next section. So this is our graphing plane, and this is for degrees. You'll notice here that the uh, angle here zero starts always in the east and if you're spinning in a positive direction you're always going well, in a different direction this would be over here so let's say this is a 60 degree angle here your terminal side would be over here resting here on the 60 degree mark if you went a negative 60 degree angle you would be down here right by the 300 and here's your terminal side of the angle. Okay, well, if you were to draw reference triangles, so let's say I draw a reference triangle here, I draw a reference triangle here. Well, let's see, if it's a 60 degree reference angle, I know the opposite side is square root of three. I know the hypotenuse is two and the adjacent side is one. Down here, the only thing different would be that the opposite side is negative square root of three. So imagine if you were trying to find like let's say the sine of 60 degrees, you're going to get opposite over hypotenuse. Likewise, if you go the negative 60 degree route, it's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So you can see that they're gonna be opposites if you compare the first quadrant to the fourth quadrant. Likewise, if you were to get an, an obtuse angle, an angle that's greater than 90 here, and you let's say you get 210, you're going to have a negative sine value. But if you have a positive 210, well, 
actually would be what 150 sorry that would be a negative 150 if you're in the uh, third quadrant or if you get a positive 150 in the second quadrant they also would be opposite each other because the y values are opposite so we could see that in general if you take the sign of an angle that's rotating in the opposite direction, it's just going to be the opposite of whatever the sign is in the positive direction. Because quadrant one has a positive y value, quadrant four has a negative y value. Likewise, you see the opposites here, okay? So we can see that happening for the sign. So let's talk about what happens for tangent. Now I'm gonna erase this. Okay, so let's talk about what happens for tangent. Let's say we were to take the tangent of 60 degrees. You're going to get, let's see, opposite over adjacent, or just the square root of three. But if I take the tangent of the negative 60 degrees, I'm going to get negative square root of three over one. Again, they're opposites. Just like the tangent, if you compare quadrant one with quadrant four, they're opposites for tangent. Likewise, they're going to be opposite if you compare angles in quadrant two with angles in quadrant three, okay? In other words, these would be the mirror images, whether you're going in a positive angle direction or a negative angle direction. Okay, let's talk about the cosine. Now, cosine is a whole different matter. If you take the cosine of 60 degrees, well, let's see, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. If you take the cosine of negative 60 degrees, hmm, the adjacent side's still positive. They're equal, okay? So in other words, when you compare quadrant one to quadrant four, they're both positive for a tangent. If you compare um, quadrant two with quadrant three angles, they're both negative for cosine. So they're always going to be equal when you talk about their mirror images in a vertical fashion. So that's why this relationship works. Make sure you go back to mathguide.com and check out our text-based lessons, our interactive quizzes, and our instructional videos. And please make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'd appreciate it. Thank you.